Hi everybody. Um, so in this video, I am going to take you through how to configure a uh, Steelhead mobile controller and connect it to the Steelhead SaaS uh, service. Okay. So now, uh, just for kicks, what I'm going to do is I have a uh, stopwatch over here, and I'm going to time how long it takes to actually do the end-to-end -end, uh, configuration. So first of all, let me go ahead and start the stopwatch. And so what you see over here is the GUI. Uh, for the SAS accelerator. And the first thing that we're going to do is to generate uh, the root CA certificate. So here you can see generate root CA. I'm going to call this Acme Corp. Now, once I've done that, it's going to take a couple of seconds uh, while the system generates the root CA, and you can see it's really come back and it's done with that. So the next thing I need to do then is to provision the service, and I'm going ahead and provision Office 365 in the US and for 200 users. Click on submit. Now, once I click on submit, what ha what's happening here in the background is that the uh, the manager is calling out to Azure and do the provisioning of the VMs, the load balancers, and so on and so forth. Okay, so so there's no need um, for us to wait for this complete. It will take about you know three to four minutes or so to uh, to provision this. And in the meantime, what we can do is to carry on and uh, register the controller um, with the with the manager here. So to do that, we click on the client appliances. And then I'll go ahead and uh, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and click uh, or copy the host name of the of the manager because I need that to register. So let me copy that, and you can see here this is my mobile controller. I've just come down to the configure um, SaaS accelerator page, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, paste it in here, and then also copy the token, and also paste it in here as well. Okay, and then I'll just go ahead and say register. Now, when you click on register, what's happening is that the mobile controller now calls back to the manager, is sending this data. And as you can see, uh, when you uh, register, it still has it in the gray list. And what this does is that it requires you to then go and approve it uh, to move this into the white list. And then you say submit. So you're familiar with the cloud portal. Um, this is uh, the way, uh, the similar workflow as well. So you also need to register and then, you know, you actually have to click on um, uh, whitelisting it before it would actually proceed. So let's go back to here and let's refresh the data. Uh, you should then now see this going to change to the whitelist. And then I'm also go ahead and en enable acceleration at the uh, box level and I click on apply. Now, what this does is that once I've enabled this and enable acceleration, it would then upload the peering certificate. And as you can see earlier, you had a cross over here. Now it shows like a, a green check mark saying that, um, you know, it's uploaded the peering certificate. It's all good to go. So from a uh, registration perspective, this is all done. Okay. This is all complete. Everything's looking good. So the next thing that we need to, we need to do is to configure the policy. And so here I go into the policy and then we'll create any policy. Let's call this uh, Acme Worldwide All. And I'm not going to be copying contents from anywhere else. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on add. Okay. Now let me just open this. Now later on, we will come back. Uh, once the service has been provisioned, we'll come back and add the impact rules. For now, what we'll do is that we'll go ahead and enable uh, SSL optimization over here. And they will also enable SAS acceleration um, at the policy level. Now, um, the reason why you need to do this is because it's conceivable that you may have some policies that you want to do SAS acceleration while some other policies you don't actually need it. Okay, so that's why uh, you have the ability to actually enable or disable SAS acceleration at the policy level. So once we've done that, we let's click on update policy. So they just push this through. And like I said, we'll come back to this uh, policy in a minute once the service has been provisioned. So the next thing we need to do is to create the package um, so that it generates the MSI, the installer uh, for like Windows and for Mac as well. So we'll go ahead and create a package and we'll give this package a name. Let's call this um, Acme uh, Worldwide All. All and then, and then we'll give it a PKG. And then for the group name, we're gonna call this Acme uh, Worldwide All. Then down here, you can leave the install directory and data store directory as is. 
Um, what we'll then do here is that we'll change uh, the policy. So we'll pick up the one that we have just configured and then we'll go click on add. And once you click on add, what happens is that the mobile controller will now actually go ahead and generate um, the packages for Windows and it will also generate the packages uh, for, um, uh, for Mac as well. Okay, so you see here's a 32-bit package there, a 64-bit and then, you know, with the Mac. Okay, so you can see there's a URL where you can um, download and then you can push this out um, to the clients through, let's say, using um, Systems Manager or whatever tool um, that the customer or that you're actually using. Um, to deploy the software out to the desktops. Okay, let's go back and take a look at where we are. Um, as you can see here, uh, come back here, it says eight seconds ago, the SaaS deployment has been completed successfully. Um, let me go back to my controller and let me just see what happens. So I go back to configure uh, SaaS Accelerator and then I go ahead and refresh the data. Okay, and what you should now see is that the service endpoint should come up and then it also tell you what policy is using. And there you go. So you have the service endpoint, which is the IP address uh, for the load balancer. And also uh, right now, nothing is using it. Okay, but it has been provisioned. So let me go back uh, to the policies and then um, I will add uh, optimization for Exchange and also for SharePoint. So go to the SaaS application, SharePoint, and I click on add. And then also add uh, sorry, not here, SaaS application, and then Exchange Online as well. I'll click on Add. And just remember to click on Update Policy, otherwise it won't uh, write the changes or won't update the policy there. So go ahead, Update Policy. Okay, so, and then we click on Save. Now, at this point, you're pretty much done. So you can actually go ahead and download this, and then you can push it out um, to the clients. That, let's go back and take a look um, at the provisioning. Um, and as you can see here, this is the application has been provisioned and the service endpoint IP address matches what you saw earlier um, on the mobile controller GUI. So let's take a look at the stopwatch quickly. So how long did that take? That took approximately uh, six or just say, you know, just six and a half minutes, just under seven minutes to provision. So it's pretty straightforward, uh, not painful at all. And um, so it's uh, good luck with provision. Thank you.